We're getting closer. It's almost Christmas. It's getting crazy out there. Have you seen it? People are shopping, wrapping, decorating, going to Christmas parties. There were so many distractions. Many of those things can be fun. But we need to keep our focus where it belongs, on the nativity, on Jesus, God's rescue plan for the world. Did you know that there were some men in the Bible who kept their focus on Jesus too? As a matter of fact, they were so focused on Jesus that they traveled a long, long way to find him. Join us today as we learn about the wise men. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the nativity scene the representation or model of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus. We started with an empty stable, remember? And we added Mary, Jesus' mother, and Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary and Joseph were both visited by an angel who told them that Mary would give birth to a son, a very special son, and God would be his father, so that he would be the son of God, the savior of the world. They were to give him the name Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. We also learned that when Caesar Augustus, the ruler of the land, wanted to count all his people, Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. And it was there that the time came for Jesus to be born in the most humble of places in a stable. Jesus, our savior, the king of all kings, the Son of God was born. The world would never be the same again. God had kept his promise to send the Savior, Jesus. The shepherds, humble and lowly, were the first to hear the good news so that we would all know that Jesus had come for all people. So anyone who believes in him would have eternal life in heaven. And the multitudes of angels sang out rejoicing and praising God. But you know, the shepherds weren't the only ones who went to visit Jesus, the newborn king. You might have seen a nativity set with these three other guys. They are called magi or wise men. And a lot of times we mistakenly place them in the nativity along with the shepherds. But in fact, they didn't visit Jesus the same day as the shepherds. They visited Jesus some time later. We don't know exactly when, but we know when they visited, Jesus was no longer in a stable, but he was in a house. So who were these men? Where were they coming from? And why were they coming to see Jesus? The Bible doesn't tell us much about these men. We don't even know for sure how many of them there actually were. But what we do know is that they were called wise men or magi and they came from the east, from afar. Most likely, they were men who had studied the stars and the sciences. But at this time, they were focused on one thing. They had one mission, to find the king of the Jews, to find Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where, Where is the newborn king, king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, Come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. So the wise men saw the star and they knew that that meant that the king of the Jews had been born. That's Jesus. They traveled a long, long way in the hopes of finding him. 
But when they came to King Herod and asked about the baby, he tried to trick them. He said he wanted to worship the new king too, but that was a lie. He actually wanted to kill him. He didn't want anyone else to have power or replace him as king. But the wise men continued on their search for Jesus. The star would guide them. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Amazing! The star guided the wise men right to Jesus, and they were overjoyed when they found him. They bowed down and worshiped Jesus. And then they gave him three valuable gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is a tribute fit for a king, and Jesus is a king. But his kingdom is not of this world. He has a heavenly kingdom, a kingdom that will have no end. Jesus is king over everything. Frankincense is incense that they often burned in the temple, going up to God like a gift. And this symbolized that Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. And myrrh was something that was used in perfumes and lotions that were often placed on dead bodies. And this pointed to Jesus' humanness and that he would die one day and that he would die for us on the cross. All three gifts point to who Jesus is and why he came, to die on the cross for us so our sins could be forgiven. He's not just a baby in a manger. He was and is the Savior of the world. The wise men left home, traveled far, went on dusty roads and stinky camels. They were willing to do whatever it took to find Jesus. So we should be willing to do the same. No, we can't find him in Bethlehem. He isn't there, but we can find him here in the Bible. Are you seeking Jesus daily? Do you read your Bible so you can know him? Do you talk to him in prayer? We need to be like the wise men and discover God's greatest gift to us, Jesus. Let's pray together. God, I thank you very much for teaching us about the real meaning of Christmas. Please help each and every one of us to seek you every day, to draw close to you, and to love you with all our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, we want you to read Luke chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 2 and to reflect on these events. Be like the wise men. Spend time seeking Jesus. He's the real meaning of Christmas. Not Santa and Rudolph, presents or candy canes, but Jesus, the King of all kings, the Savior, Savior of, of the world. world.